Over the last few years, we've seen a lot of Roundup resistant weeds developing across the United States. So today we want to talk a little bit about what you should throw with your Roundup in soybeans to best control weeds. Now let me start off by saying all the options, Darren, are pretty lousy. I don't like them. Hopefully you did put a good pre-emerge program down, but if you're going to go with something post, there at least are some choices. They're just probably not going to be perfect. Well, we're talking about killing Roundup resistant broadleaf weeds. That's really the key, and we're talking about doing it in a broadleaf crop like soybeans, especially when Roundup isn't working for us anymore. And especially since none of these products are new. They're all 20 years old or more. Well, it's... there are some new products. It's just they're <laughs> tank mixes of old products. <laughs> right, it's just, it's just new names on old products. So any weed you've got, post-emerge in soybeans, I have nothing new for you. I've got all 20-year-old materials. But you know what? Some of those things, like I say, aren't bad. You can get 90, maybe 95% control of two to four inch tall weeds. All right, let's start by talking about this. When we talk about weed control in soybeans, we've got to have a great pre-emerge strategy. We come in with three different sites of action pre-emerge. We use a PPO, we use one of the yellows like Treflan, Sonland, or Prowl, and then we like to use Metribuzin. If we can use one of each of those classes of chemistry, we'll do a great job on a lot of these broadleaf weeds so we don't have so many to fight post-emerge. The other thing that I'll say is this, a lot of our post-emerge options like Pursuit, like Flexstar, I mean there's just first a number rate. of them, first rate, that can be used pre-emerge or post, save all those for post if you possibly can. Now, if you've already pulled the trigger and used some of them pre, we'll have to give you a couple options here post-emerge and I'll say this, like you were saying, the first option kind of stinks, the second option <laughs> really stinks worse. So we're going to have to probably burn your beans just a little bit trying to kill some of these weeds if you've already used up your best post-emerge option. Okay, so as we're going through these different products on, in other words, which is best for each particular weed, just understand, hey, if I've already used that product pre, chances are I can't use it again post. All right, let's rapid fire through some weeds. Well, let's just start off with the big one. Let's start off with Palmer pigweed or tall water hemp. If you have a pigweed yep, I like... species weed that's resistant to Roundup, what do you do? Yep, I like Flexstar the best. The issue with Flexstar is the use rate and where it can be used. It's not labeled in all areas of the United States. It's certainly not labeled to the west where they have little rainfall and lower rates are used the farther west and the farther north you go because carryover is a concern with Flexstar. But Flexstar is absolutely the best on any of those pigweed species. Number two I would say is either it's uh, cobra. cobra. It's Cobra. Cobra is well, number two. Cadet would be well, number yeah. three. Cobra, that, Cadet. That's really one, two, three. Yeah. Now, if you have Flexstar labeled in the area, great. If you don't, then I would turn to Cobra. Now, here's the other thing. For any of these products to work, and the same is going to be true on the other broadleaf weeds we're going to talk about for the most part. You have to kill them when they're small. Otherwise, it gets very difficult when they're big. And so have we're fairly talking, good coverage and use the right spray edge. We're talking two to four inch tall weeds. That's it. And it's going to take full rates of these products to make it work. So whatever the full rate is for your area, like Brian was talking about Flexstar, for your area, it's right. gonna vary throughout the country. With Cobra, it's typically 12 and a half ounces. With Cadet, it could be as high as nine tenths of an ounce. You just have to check the label on the rotation that you've got and in your area. All right, next weed. All right, the next one would be common ragweed. Common ragweed, the best thing is first rate. I'd say Flexstar and Cobra would be number two. I don't know which I like better, but first rate's absolutely the best. If you used first rate pre though, don't use it post you've got a lot more risk for carryover. Okay, how is that different from giant ragweed? Same. I do the same thing with giant ragweed as I would with common ragweed, but just understand, giant ragweed's very recognizable when it gets three or four feet tall. We're talking about three or four inch tall weeds. If it's bigger than three or four inches, then there's nothing I can give you for an option that's going to be great. Plus the growth rate for giant ragweed is pretty fast, so you have to get out there early and you have to yep. get used to seeing these weeds when they're only a couple inches tall and only have a few leaves. That's when you need yep, to identify hey, them. Yep, the good news with both first rate and flexstar, they do have some residual, so I'd way rather have you spray too early than too late. Okay, mare's tail. <laughs> <laughs> Mare's tail. Uh, I think well, you first probably all, like first, first all, straight the best. I like the combination of classic and flex star the best. All right, but let's talk about burn down because a lot of people think, well, I have to have Roundup in there. It's my burn down. No, I no, don't. A lot of people think they have to have 2,4-D in there, and I don't like that either because 2,4-D right ahead of soybean planting, you're taking tremendous risk with your yield. So pre-emerge, I'd use something like Authority or Valor plus Metribuzin plus some fertilizer, and usually that's okay. Yeah, and you can use Gramoxone too and just yes, fry Gramoxone's things off above yep, ground. Yep. That would be a good, good option. All right, um, next weed. Okay, let's look right now. Kochia? 
Kosha, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say out of weed that isn't quite Roundup yeah. resistant, but well, Kosha is Roundup resistant. Yep. Kosha post emerge is probably the one in soybeans we have the least amount of control on. I don't care what product you use. I'd say Cobra is best. I don't know what you think, but I like Cobra the best. And I would say you're talking 70 to at very best 90% control. Well, here's the problem it's also ALS resistant almost right. everywhere. So the best options were the ALS products. Now, yeah, Cobra is probably number one. Okay, I was going to talk about Lamb's Quarter. Yep. And well, it's not really Roundup resistant, but it is highly tolerant to Roundup. Yep, but the good news there is it's not ALS tolerant. And so what I would suggest is Harass. That's basically the old pinnacle, the generic of the old pinnacle. All right, let's take another one that isn't really Roundup resistant, but if two quarts of Roundup only get, at best, 80% control, wild buckwheat is pretty I much don't know. resistant. I mean, if you kill wild buckwheat with Roundup and it's an inch tall, chances are you're going to get most of it. Well, good luck Better than 80%. It. I mean, we're talking about a viney yeah, weed here. And this is part of it. If you can Roundup get it before it the vines, vines out, yep, morning glory, Morning glory, wild buckwheat. Roundup is just a little weak on those particular weeds. So the best thing, in our opinion, is to use Pursuit. The problem is Pursuit with Pursuit. Or yeah, Pursuit or Raptor. I only usually recommend a half rate or maybe a three quarter rate because I'm worried about carryover. So it depends on the area of the country that you're in. The other interesting thing with Pursuit and Raptor, we talk about all these herbicides and oh, they carry over so much more in high pH. Well, guess what? Pursuit and Raptor carry over more in low pH ground. So make sure you're liming your soil. Now, the other thing, Velvet Leaf, this one isn't that hard to kill, but it is pretty prolific. I mean, even a small now, little Velvet the Leaf one, can have the seed That's the out. one where I would say we can get almost 100% control out of either resource or cadet. The problem is you're not going to have, you know, tremendous season long residual or anything. That's another reason why some guys like throwing some pursuit in there because that does give you some residual on velvet leaf, but otherwise resource and cadet are great and they'll even kill great big velvet leaf. All right. Well, we've rapid fired through a bunch of weeds there, but we haven't even talked about our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to stop that one coming up later in the show.